yo, this is going to be a Tarkov movement guide. So if you enjoy these styles of videos, make sure to drop a comment and a like and let me know what you think about it. I also will be covering some aspects of the game that I covered in my last tutorial video. So if there's something that you've already know about, or you don't really care about, make sure to check the timestamps on the video. I will have everything timestamped so you can just skip forward to whatever you want to know more about. Also, I do stream every day live on Twitch. So if you want to catch my actual raw gameplay, make sure to head over there and drop a follow. There'll be a link in the description. <clears throat> so let's say you want to peek this blue suitcase right here. This is the enemy that you're fighting. If I walk up to this wall and I just strafe out really wide and then walk back in, if he was trying to shoot me, I'd be really easy to hit while I'm out here. So what you can do is that you let go of your directional input, like your A or your D key. You can do it on W and S, but I'll get to that later. But let's say it's your A and your D input. If I let go of it early and then input my key to walk back into cover, the timing on it is actually a little bit faster than if I were to just hold it back and forth, as you can see. And something that makes peeking a lot quicker is say, once again, A and D is pretty slow. What you can do is use a circle strafe by inputting W or S in between your movements of A and D. And you basically walk in a very fast circle it's a lot more like reactive like you don't have to like like pre-fire pressure keys knowing that a guy is there like i can just like walk out see him instantly on peak like it takes a lot less like timing and input and it's more you can just spam it like i can walk in a circle indefinitely and it's not going to be difficult to keep inputting this so very useful and just to peak corners faster to walk in a quick circle than it is just to swing wide It'll save you a lot. Just gets you behind cover faster. It's very useful. Okay, so sprint free looking. Say there's an enemy in this room, right? He's directly in the middle of it. Maybe we'll just use this like this bar right here, for example. If that bar is the enemy, and I have a feeling he's in there. So let's say I pull up to the room. This is how I'd play it. I'd open the door, get off of it in case he pre-fires it. Sprint across. I spot the guy, so now I want to sprint across back to get the right hand so that I can get an easier, quicker shot on this guy without just walking out in the open and getting killed easily because he's just going to be preeming the door. So when you're sprint free looking, you're basically making it so that you're a lot harder to hit because you're moving faster. If I were to just swing this all slow, there's a relative chance this guy could kill me if he was just aiming at the door. It's a very easy preem. But if I'm sprint free looking, I'm moving across the opening so much faster that I'm very difficult to hit. One thing you do have to keep in mind is say he's holding this and he's getting used to me just spamming the same thing. Like, let's say I just keep doing it, right? He's eventually going to pre-fire me. So something that you can do is say, I run off, spot the guy. I want to get back, but I don't want to risk getting pre-fired and headshot is jumping on the way back to throw your head height off because you already know where the guy is it's not like you need to spot him again and you probably will while you're jumping so you can sprint free look spot him get back onto the right hand free fire him you have a lot better chances of winning than if you just strafed across the doorway this has probably been covered like a million times everyone knows what this is but right hand peeking in tarkov let's say if this pillar, once again, is the enemy. And I'm trying to aim at him. Look at how much more, or I guess, how much more in cover I am when I'm peeking off of a right hand, right? I'm so in cover that I can't even see this guy on my own screen until I'm ADSing. And let alone if you throw a lean into that too. Like, I can see deep into the room, but when I un-ADS, like, I can't even see the guy I'm trying to shoot. So, I try to go on a left hand, right i can fully see this guy my gun's still not around the corner i have to basically get all the way in the open till my gun comes out and if i'm leaning yeah like look at how in the open i am i mean easy kill compared to if i'm leaning off the right hand like completely in cover so you always want to make sure to right hand peek and if i do get into a fight like let's say i'm right-handed him right it's not like i'm impossible to kill when i hold the right hand 
I keep peeking the same thing over and over again. He's eventually just going to aim at me, pre-fire me, headshot me, just get a good shot, right? Like, he's trying to play the game too. If I just keep peeking the same thing, chances are I'm going to die. So a good thing you can do is, let's say you peek, shoot, peek, shoot. He starts pre-firing up high, right? And you peek from low. Because it's you're throwing off your head height so that he can't just aim at one spot. He's like, okay, I have to aim up, down, up, down. Makes it very hard. So I can like sprint across, shoot, jump back across, run up to the opening, shoot while low, shoot while high. You have a lot higher chances of living and not getting hit. So jiggle peeking. Basically what it is, if I peek on somebody and unpeek really quick, it's like too fast for them to react and hit me. It's jiggle peeking. It's just a very fast peek. They don't have a lot of time to hit you. Basically how you do it really well with leans in this game is you're taking the time period of your inertia, like direction change of your character decelerating and accelerating. And in that downtime of nothing you can be doing right here, like you're just waiting to speed back up to unpeak, you can input a lean on top of it. And while you're waiting for your character to direction change, it's basically like, I can't see the guy now. Now I can see him. And now I'm walking into cover and you're just doing that really quick. It can be hard to hit a shot while peeking this quick, but it's the fact that you're basically not possible to hit because you're peeking so quick on the other person's end. You can see the inputs on my keyboard overlay. It's just lean out, lean in. It works on any side too. You can do it on the left hand. It's just you expose yourself more so it doesn't look as fast. But just leaning while you're waiting for your inertia to help you change directions. And then something very big that I catch a lot of people with is, let's say I'm getting into a little fight, right? I'm in this doorway, he's in that doorway. He's just where this blue wall is on the right side. Like say he's holding here and he's shooting at me, right? I'm in here. I have the left hand, I don't really feel like wrapping around, which this would be the better play just to go out and around. But let's say I'm trying to challenge him off the door. And I peek and he shoots me. I start sprinting he's gonna think that i'm low hp and then he might enter a chase so i'll peek out take damage sprint bait he's like oh i'm running and then i'm back in his face pre-firing knowing that he's there or if i hear him start to move right like if i hear a footstep i know he's coming in so it's basically taking that the enemy knows that they hit you they want to make a play while they have the advantage so they make a play and then you just re-swing on them and catch them off guard it works very frequently like i get a lot of kills doing this you can be even closer to somebody too like let's say a lot of the times i fight people in here they hold this right hand right here through the glass it's kind of hard to see i'm peeking the corner they shoot me i run backwards i hear him start to move so i know he's just gonna be going in a straight line at this doorway like this so i just take that time to repeat and kill him just bait the sprint repeat kill him when he starts to move Also, if somebody is, once again, sitting here, holding the right hand, just really hard to kill because they're not moving. Something that you can do is, let's say, he fires five bullets at me when I peek, fires five, shoots ten because I sprint into the wall to bait audio, because he hears us running, right? He thinks I'm going to run into the room or I'm running backwards. If I, like, shoot him and hit him, bait sprint, he might waste, like, let's say he shoots 25 bullets, 20 bullets. If he's using a gun... That only has 30 rounders like let's say he shoots an ak-101 and you can hear that he shot an ak-101 then you'd know oh this guy's 10 to 5 bullets so all i have to do is try to like bait out these last five or you wait for that reload sound and then you push in and kill him so a lot of like little movement jukes on walls to bait pre-fires is a really good way to get kills on people and then i know a lot of people that have watched me have seen me jump shot a lot so jump shotting is basically you're taking the fact that you can do a regular jump directly out of a sprint jump if you do any regular jump in this game you see how my gun barrel stays up the whole time you can accurately shoot in this game while in the air currently but if i were to sprint you'd see every time i sprint jump my gun stays down so you're sprinting to gain velocity and then you're sideways jumping to keep the momentum out of that sprint and you keep your gun in the air so you can shoot so like if this right here is the dude I'm trying to fight, 
and I'm coming across this corner and I just want to go for a good play. I guess it's not a good play, but like a flashy play. I can sprint up to this and you can just jump shoot while in the air. Which, if I'm getting pushed off a right hand, right? To say, I'm the enemy, I know I'm outside this window and I'm swinging up like this and they know I'm gonna run out. Them having the right hand is such an advantage that sometimes if I know he's about to swing me and I think I just die if I sit still or sit low, you can just jump out shooting because a lot of people are not ready to aim up in the air. They're swinging out of a doorway. Like, they don't expect me just to be suspended halfway up in the opening. So, sprinting, jump shotting. Something that is very movement related too around jump shotting is if you want to traverse the map faster, which you have to make sure you have the stamina for it, which is why I use SJ6 a lot when I play the game. But almost every time I'm running up here, right? This is kind of a bad spot because it's so open, no cover. You can shoot through all these edges. Like if you get shot here, you're basically dead. So if I'm fighting a guy and I don't want to run all the way around this, you know, it just takes so much time I'm in the open. Whenever you sprint jump in this game, you can jump immediately after landing. So I can just jump, jump again, jump again. But if I normal jump, you can see there's a lot longer of a cooldown in between my jumps. Which is why if you're sprinting, you can basically just chain inputs to clear stuff faster. Which is why the regular jump works out of the sprint jump to hit a jump shot on somebody. But if I'm trying to walk up this opening, I can sprint jump into a sideways jump and clear it really quick. So basically, sprint jumps can be chained one after another instantly with no cooldown. You can just jump, 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 but regular jumps. There's a cooldown, there's like a time period in between you hitting the ground. So that's why sprinting into a sideways jump works <clears throat> and if i'm doing a sideways jump like let's say this trash bag right here is the enemy and i'm gonna come out and jump shot this guy i don't want to do my sprint jump in the open right so if i'm doing this he can shoot me the whole time and then my regular jump is when i can fire back it's better that if i land here and then do my normal jump to shoot at him because then he won't be able to shoot me while I'm in this time period where my gun's down. And I can just fly around the corner from about, like, you know, if he was sitting here aiming, my feet are, like, at this white note on the wall right here. I'm coming out of that at, like, the height of this bush flying off the wall. It'd be a lot harder to pre-aim me if I know the guy's sitting there. Okay, and let's say I time my jump so that my apex of my jump is lined up with the wall and I'll basically be landing here when I touch the ground. If you input a sideways directional input when touching the ground out of a normal jump, your character will instantly walk in that direction at full speed. If I jump out right, but then I hold left when I hit the ground, you'll see that my character basically instant direction changes. If I sprint jump this, way I was saying, and I'm landing right here, I can basically be instantly walking back into cover at the same time. Oops. Get the distance on that better. See how fast I strafe into cover? It's pretty hard to hit from the enemy's POV. It just allows you to, like, jump spot somebody off of a wall and unpeak right away. Okay, let's say I'm jumping in this game, and it doesn't matter what jump I'm doing, I'm just going to use a sprint jump as example. If I do any jump in the game, and I hold W or S while in the air, I will use this as my point of example, just like lined up with this table. Every time, I don't know what that is. Every time I reach this point, I'm going to jump towards this wall. I'm going to run out. I'm going to jump and just hold W. You can see that I basically clear the whole gap. Almost the entire wall. But if I were to do this sprint and then I held backwards, you can see how much my character stops in the air. 
the game actually gives you a small amount of air control in case you either mess up a jump or you're trying to sprint jump something but not go too far it gives you a lot more control in the air and then i'll hold forwards the entire time So something related to crouching movement, let's say I'm sitting right here behind this box, right? And this is my enemy right there, those boxes. As you can see, when I'm in a full crouch, my gun doesn't have clearance on this. I can't see the enemy at all. So some people would just use their crouch slider to stand up a little bit more. But if something's basically directly head high it, like, oh, I could shoot this sticky note, but the hide over bore, like my, my bullets are going to hit the box, right? I'm not going to have clearance. When you sit still completely, your character model is actually lower than when you're moving. So if I were to sit here and shoot, you see I don't have clearance. If I start strafing though, look how high up my character gets. You can see my character in the bottom left. I'm not changing the height of my character at all. It's just when you move, your gun goes up a little bit. So... Now I have clearance. I stand still. Now I don't. So if you're ever barely aiming over the edge of something, like I can't see these boxes, start walking. Now I can see them. I actually like barely don't have clearance on this. Like you could tick up your slider by one just to shoot. If I stand still, hit the box, start walking. I'm hitting shots on target. So just inputting any directional movement will make your character stand up slightly higher than when you're standing still, which is very useful if you're shooting over something. And let's say I'm in a fight. Once again, I'm fighting whatever this knocked over thing in the road is. And I'm behind this piece of cover. I'm shooting, I'm shooting, maybe I'm out of ammo, maybe I'm getting hit and I think I'm gonna lose. If you stop moving completely to lower your character and then look down, you'll actually duck a little bit in game like your body will be hunched over so I'm more in cover so if I'm in a fight shooting 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 and I'm losing look straight down hit that reload you know maybe heal the chest and then peek back up and start fighting so doing a look down or just changing the where your character is facing can actually save you especially when you're getting sniped if somebody's shooting at you and you're just spinning your camera back and forth and you're out of stamina you're pretty hard to hit because it's throwing off your head a lot. So the same thing applies when you're behind cover. If I'm fighting, don't want to get shot, just look straight down. And the top of your helmet will be facing them, so if you do catch a headshot, it's more likely to hit the armor, which is very nice. Something very, very huge when it comes to movement in the game, which is why I don't usually use backpacks like this. I just had it on because I killed somebody who had it. But... I run the takedown backpack a lot. It's that narrow bag. It's like a three by, I want to say like a three by eight. Just a long skinny backpack. I like using smaller bags and then just trying to pick up more valuable rare items. Because if you run those really huge backpacks all the time, and then let's say you fill it up, your character's footsteps become so loud and the weight makes your character have more inertia so the heavier and heavier you get the worse your movement is the worse your timings of like oh i want to jiggle peek this quick either side like you're not going to be able to do that you're just gonna like walk out accidentally over peak and then have to walk in you'll probably die when you over peak so i actually recommend using smaller backpacks just try to pick up higher value uh loot and then even behind all the extra like heavy stuff it'll make you win a lot more fights if you keep light this is a little bit more obscure, but this is just the best area I can think of where this happens a lot. So if you're jumping and you keep holding a key, like let's say I'm jumping into this box and I wasn't clearing it and I just kept holding it. Sometimes it won't let my character like stick onto the surface so that I can jump again. So when you're jumping, letting go of your inputs will let you grab onto smaller ledges like right here. I let go of all my inputs for a second and then my character was able to clip the top of this and climb up. Whereas if I were to just do that without letting go of my input. I can't jump again. I'm spamming spacebar even though I 
You can see that I'm grabbing it, but I'm not jumping. So just try lining it up, jumping, let go of your inputs, and then re-input again, and you should be able to clear it. And also, if you're jumping onto something thin, like let's say I was trying to land up here, right? If I jump this and let go of, let go of my inputs, my character will stick when he hits the top of it and I won't walk over the edge. But if I were to jump this and then hold A or D, my character is doing what I was explaining earlier with jump shotting, where as soon as you touch the ground, if you're holding an input, you'll slide. It's like, if I hold left here, my character instantly walks to the left when he lands. It can be really annoying when you're trying to climb something out of a regular jump. Because your character will just keep momentum and walk off the edge, so... Completely stopping when you hit the ground, you're not going to slide at all. Just let go of your inputs. A lot of people, if they have crouch on control, they will have to press their crouch input, stand up, and then sprint. So the time it takes for your pinky to be able to reach down, hit control, and then go up and hit shift, is just not as fast as if I have two separate fingers across my keyboard pressing the same inputs. So, I think keep, keep in mind when you're setting up your keybinds, that keys that are commonly pressed together in sequence aren't too close to where they're interfering with each other. Like, the main one that I would say I have while playing the game is leaning left while walking left or forwards. It doesn't really feel natural, because, like, if I'm hitting A already, I'm basically going to have to press Q with my middle finger, which will take it off a of W. Whereas, if I had, like... I think Summit does this. There's a couple players who do this where they lean on V and D, which allows them to have full control of their character movement while using their thumb to input other leans. Some people do leans on mouse buttons too for that reason. But another example is you're using your mouse to aim. If you're leaning and trying to aim at the same time, you're pressing buttons on your mouse, you're throwing off your grip of how you usually hold your mouse while shooting. So it's just you're not going to have as accurate of a shot if you have leans on your mouse buttons. So, it's just good to not pit keys too close to each other where they interfere. My best example of a game where this happens is, let's say you're playing Apex, or you're playing, like, Quake Champions, or whatever you're playing, and the game has, like, a shotgun, like a frequently used shotgun. You probably don't want to have your shotgun on your 2 key. You'd probably want to have it on your 1 or your 3. Because when you're using a shotgun, let's say this dumpster is the enemy, I'm sprinting towards him and I want to swap to my shotgun. Pressing 2 feels a little bit unnatural while holding W. Like, I don't want to be pressing 2 with my pointer finger or with my ring finger. I'm just taking too many fingers off my other inputs. So something that you can do is put it on 1 or 3. I can easily press 1 with my ring finger or press 3 with my pointer finger while sprinting. So it allows me to close a gap, which I will be doing every time I use a shotgun, and then swap to it and get the kill without, like, interrupting the inputs on my keyboard. Because I don't want to, you know, stand still for a second, swap to my shotgun, and then run. I want to get on this guy. So, it's not too big of a deal. Tarkov default keybinds are honestly pretty good. But, just something that if you are just starting off, or you're somebody who gets used to new keybinds really quick, consider swapping it up earlier on, before you have too much muscle memory on it. So, something very common, you're playing the streets, you're walking up on this building... People sit in here all the time to loot stuff, like filing cabinets or the rare spawns. You pull up, you see that everything's opened. Peeking this left hand is very risky, because once again, you're like full exposing your body in order to look in the room. And if there's a guy, say, sitting right here, just crouching on the right hand standing, he's going to have a very easy time killing you. He's going to be like impossible to hit. So peeking like this can be very rough. So sometimes, instead of leaning out to the left, you can just do a W and S peek where you just walk in with your gun barrel and then walk directly out. Like you don't have to, you don't always have to hit A or D to peek in. Just, you can like bait with the barrel of your gun and they'll see the barrel of your gun before you're around the corner. They'll sometimes shoot and pre-fire. So will be like, okay, he's there. And then might not be a good pre-fire, but you can swing out and then shoot at him on the right hand. It's just a good way to get info of people. You just, they see your character model way earlier 
but they aren't actually able to damage you because it's just your gun. Like, if they shoot your gun, it's not going to do damage to you. So, just WS peeking in doorways can be very useful. And let's say I'm fighting a guy outside this cave. Like, he's right here. He's pulling up. I'm fighting, like, the scab boss, Kaban. And I'm holding from the inside. Once again, this is like the same thing as just re-peeking with like the leans versus the crouch. But if I run up, shoot at this guy, now he's pre-aiming up. Just look for small things like this, like shoot him through the gap, shoot here, shoot here, run down, quick shoot him through here, bait like you're running back up, and then peek him from this again. You're just doing anything you can to just be peeking from multiple angles all the time. You just don't wanna you don't wanna make yourself predictable. The more you're moving, peeking from other random angles, the harder you are to fight. Okay, so another mechanic around jumping in this game is the amount of time you take sprinting forwards without touching your directional keys actually increases the length of your jump. So a very common jump that like a lot of high level players will use. It's let's say this extract's not up. I'm trying to go out to this bunker to extract. I'm heavy. You drop your bag here. And then you run over to this bunker. And you run up to the top. Line up the jump. Clear it. Come back. Grab your backpack through the crack. A very common play that some high levels will do. But the reason why this jump is possible is if I were to just come up here, right, and I'm just pressing a bunch of directional inputs, and then I just turn and jump, I'm not going to clear it. The longer you take holding only W, not pressing A and D, just hold W, try not to pan your mouse either, your jump will go further the longer that you're holding your sprint. Of course, there is a cap out. It's like a one second, like, time period, basically. So if I run up this, line up the jump, Try not to pan my mouse and jump, I'll clear it. So, once again, the longer you hold it, jump, you'll clear that gap. If I was pressing a bunch of random keys, panning my mouse, I'm not going to clear it. Even if I jump at the last second still. So, crouching mid-air, doing like a crouch jump. It can actually help you fit into smaller spaces. Like, let's say I'm doing a jump. This is a jump a lot of people know about. I made a customs video a long time ago. That's still on my channel if you want to watch it about jump spots. But you can line this up, clear this, and then crouch as you hit the window. And you can fit through this window and get into the warehouse. You can actually do it on all of these windows. Crouching can actually help you, like, stick and fit through smaller spots. It does reduce the size of your character model, so if I were to look up and somebody was standing on top of me, it would boost them slightly higher into the air, and if I were to look down, it would lower a little bit. So, crouching does adjust your height, it helps you fit through things. Looking down can help you fit underneath stuff, but these are just some examples of areas where crouch jumping can be useful. Okay, so this is another example of crouching, changing your hitbox depending on how your camera is facing. If you're ever out here at Old Gas, you're trying to go Fortress, you'll see a lot of new players will run up. They'll go prone under this and crawl. If you're prone and there's a guy up there and he's sniping at you, you're definitely going to die. But if you run up, you can actually crouch this. Looking down makes it a lot easier and faster. You can just normal crouch under it if you stick to the side. As you can see, it was more of like my character getting pressed through it. So if you just sprint up, look down and keep running... It makes it so your character just slips right through and you can just keep moving really fast. This is a, another good example of you not having inertia while sprinting. You can instantly direction change. So if you're ever walking over like small gaps or something, if you change directions fast enough, you may not even need to jump. Let's see a lot of people run up here. They'll jump to clear this. And if you're like low, like endurance, like physical skills on your PMC, that jump can be a lot more stamina. So what you can do is you can actually just sprint up and you can just not have to jump at all because you're taking advantage of the fact that you have a no inertia and this point is slightly higher than that point so by the time you fall you can direction change into it 
Then you can just run over the gap. This also helps when falling down any obstacle. This is super obscure, not useful in most areas, but sometimes I'll get into a fight. There's a guy down here, right? I'll shoot him, light him up. He'll run back into this wall to heal right here. They don't expect you to be able to get on them quick because you have to run down the staircases, so they have quite a time to heal. What you can do is, since I'm running in this direction, if I were to fall straight down, easily breaking my legs, blacking them out, fracturing, what you can do is, taking the time it takes to fall, you can direction change while sprinting and catch this fence, and you can run into it. It takes almost all the fall damage to when you'll never catch a fracture, and then you can swing this at full speed. So just take advantage of the fact that you can direction change if you're sprinting instantly, because it also works while falling. So you can run off of this, catch the top of the fence, it'll break your fall damage massively, and now you're on the bottom floor. If you are ever trying to jump shot somebody, let's say there's a guy in this room, you want to make sure that you don't hit your head on the ceiling. So make sure that like the apex height of your jump is not in the doorway. Like if I want to sprint and jump shot this guy sitting in the corner, a lot of people will sit right there. You don't want to run into the room and just hit your head on the ceiling and stop and stand still or this guy's going to kill you. So make sure that the low point of your jump is actually at the frame of the door or you're landing about outside of the door so that when you're going into the air, you're not hitting your head on the ceiling. If you're ever trying to clear something, like a jump, and your character's not jumping high enough and you're sprinting, and you're like, oh, I don't know why I can't clear this jump. Sprinting and jumping actually gives you a lot less jump height than doing a regular jump. A good example is a place with low ceilings, like dorms. If I do a sprint jump, you can see I'm not hitting my head on the ceiling. I can jump completely fine. And every time I do a regular jump, my character hits his head on the ceiling and gets sent straight back down. So if you're trying to clear something, just make sure that you're doing a regular jump to actually get jump height rather than sprint jumping. Sprint jumping will take you further. Regular jumping will take you higher. A good example play of some good movement is let's say you're in a fight in dorms. Very, very common. People just sit on the right hand at the end of two story elbow. They'll basically just sit around this chair right here. They'll just be like, crouch sitting here, crouch further back right here, or they'll be on this pillar, just right handing this. If you're ever in a fight where you're just stuck there, take advantage of the fact that you can direction change while falling and run up to the second floor. You can actually take the time it takes for your falling to direction change. So as soon as I start slipping, walk in, and you can clip the edge of things, and you can just end up on something like second floor and be behind somebody. This play is relatively known, so don't spam this expecting this guy not to be aiming at you. He used to be way more broken because he didn't make audio falling off of things. Like back then, if I walked off this bed, you hear the sound of me hitting the ground, that never played. So that used to be extremely overpowered until they fixed it, but... People do know about that. It probably won't work on most people, but just something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's say I want to clear something. I want to go from here to there. Usually, if you want to clear something that's further and higher, you need some momentum. So you may need to get like a walk up and then you'd be able to clear it. But something you can do is if you have literally nothing to go off of, but you want to clear a longer jump, you can walk on the edge of something and if, you were to, if I were to try to sprint here, right, I wouldn't have the time for my character to enter a sprint to get off of this piece of terrain. And if I were to just do a regular jump out of a complete standstill, I barely am able to clear it. What you can do is that you get on the edge of something, and in order, just very fast, you press W, shift, space, basically all at the same time. Just fast enough to where your character can't actually input a regular sprint. And your character will get a very fast velocity forwards jump at the same height of a regular jump. It's not as far as a sprint jump. Like, you're not going to clear the same distance. But it is the same height as a regular jump. 
and it's further. So, just W shift space at the same time. Makes it very easy to clear big jumps. Okay, this is really only useful in specific areas, but let's say there's a guy around like this ramp and I'm trying to fight him. And if I peek this, he's just able to shoot my legs the whole time. It's just a bad angle. You can take advantage of the fact that when you are sprint jumping, you can instantly direction change into any direction upon landing. And you can basically like chain together jumps to clear gaps that you shouldn't be able to normally. Like if I was standing on top of that wall right there, right? And I wanted to jump inside of this train cart. If I'm just standing here, I'm not really going to be able to clear that because I won't be able to get a sprint off of this and a regular jump wouldn't clear that gap. So you can take advantage of the fact that you can direction change. And when I sprint across this, I can pan my camera to the left and right as I hit the ground and put a new jump and I can clear this gap that I wouldn't usually be able to sprint off of on that edge. It's pretty useful just to get across angles and also if you're playing against players who are not as experienced with jumping, you can get into spots where you can basically sit there and even if they kill you, they won't be able to loot you. This is a, not a super common spot, but most people do know about this, that you can chain together some sprint jumps and end up in this train cart. If I was sitting here, somebody below me killed me and I was in the middle and I died right here, they're not going to be able to loot me unless they're able to chain together those jumps. And if they don't know about it, it would be extremely difficult. You can also do it from an angle like this. You're just taking advantage of the fact that you can direction change on any given jump. If you get into a fight anywhere, just think about things that you can use to your advantage. Like, you don't always have to be on flat ground while you're going for something. Like, if you see boxes in the environment and you think you can jump on them to get a better play, like, being unpredictable is really good. If your aim gets consistent enough to we can basically just land a jump shot on a dime in any situation, like, say there's a guy playing there. If I'm running out in the open here and he, like, sees me doing all this, he can still be shooting me. So maybe thinking, like, oh, I'm going to swap up the elevation. I'm going to jump off these boxes and then do it. Like, if he's there, he's getting fried by that. And nobody expects you to be peeking, like, how high up am I? When I'm jump shotting, like, you're very high up out in the open. It's very hard to preempt that. But yeah, that's about it. Tarkov's movement is not something that's like super complicated compared to maybe like a game like Apex or Quake. But there's a couple movement mechanics to where if you're newer or you're just not used to messing around with them, you might not pick up on. The game doesn't have any like frame perfect timings of doing anything. It's nothing super complicated, but it's something that the more you mess around with it and the more you just get comfortable doing everything, like you may have to hyper focus on it when you start, but the better you get at the game, you'll start subconsciously just doing those things on a dime and you won't have to think about it. So the more you get into that state of gameplay, the more something happens and you can just react to it. Like, let's say I'm pulling up, there's a guy on the other side of the wall. Like, just knowing how to, like, instantly jump and land on something and not have to think about it. Just, like, doing any type of movement. Just... The more you play, the less you think about it, the better you're gonna get. And just mess around with it. Like, you're not gonna be perfect. The game doesn't have extreme movement, but... The more you do it, you can see, like, if I want to peek something specific, I'm just so used to, like, the way my character moves. That my character's movement is almost more important than my actual aim myself because a lot of the aim in this game is centered around like inertia and character movement so the better movement you're gonna have the better aim the better everything so just practice it you'll get better that is the end of today's video but if you enjoyed it make sure to drop a like and a comment and if you have any questions feel free to ask me either on discord i do have a discord server and there's a lot of people in there that can also fill you in on some questions or hop into my live stream. I am live every day on Twitch. But uh, other than that, thank you for watching the video and I will see you guys again soon.